Hi, Mark Verheer here. Uh, into the past actually asked a very nice question on how to get into old uh, computer um, gaming coming from a 8-bit, uh, 16-bit gaming uh, situation. How to transit from a 8 to 16-bit and I, I guess console gaming background to the 8-bit home computer systems that there are, are out there and uh, yeah there's there's not a real easy answer to that um, yeah and it's 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 easy and not so easy at the same time actually all you really have to do is familiar yourself familiarize yourself with a couple of the systems that you have interest in um, I recommend the Commodore 64 or the Atari 8-bit computer line because they are the most accessible from a United States uh, standpoint, I guess. Uh, of course, you could also go for the Apple II or any other system that you have access to. Um, reading up. Reading up is something I'd recommend you do. Uh, there's uh, facts, frequently asked questions on virtually any computer system out there. Uh, just type in FA and then the system that you want to have a fact uh, on. Uh, I'll pr provide you with some links and some websites down here. Um, and just, uh, yeah, you just got to read up first, I guess. That's my uh, suggestion. And uh, now some more rather unstructured video for you. Other than just, you know, uh, finding yourself a nice, uh, a nice system that you like, and, and and trying to go for it, you know, just just uh, just buy stuff for it. Uh, you just go <laughs> grab yourself one of these and a couple of cards. Uh, I made another video um, a while back. Just you know, grab yourself one of these. It's an 800 XL. Um, you can you can buy the newer ones, the 130XE, which has more RAM. But most software will just work on this. Um, there's games on it um, on cartridge form. They just pop in here. Uh, they use st similar nine-pin uh, game port connectors all the way around. And um, of course, it's very good to have a focal point. You know, if you're used to. Um, Nintendo 8-bit gaming or Sega 8-bit gaming probably uh, Atari games and Commodore games will look a bit more rudimentary actually the Commodore 64 which I have over here uh, this uses similar cartridge ports uh, same 9-pin connectors uh, different cartridge port uh, over here but basically, these computers, you know, these were actually the, the ones that, uh, uh, oh yeah, and I have Twitter still going on. Uh, these were actually the, the systems in the early 80s that uh, most Europeans, you know, the, the ZX Spectrum, for example, uh, were, would, would, would game on. And um, not necessarily the best gaming systems because they they were more designed as general purpose computers, of course. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, um, gaming often is more smooth, solid on uh, on the consoles. But there are some gems uh, that are pretty uh, pretty good. And 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 the good thing is that things like video cables. Uh, actually work on both the Commodore and uh, the uh, the Atari. They use a DIN plug, uh, but actually the cables themselves are compatible and you can actually get SCART cables if you live in, uh, in, in Europe. That's very nice to get, get composite video over SCART, but also composite video cables. I'm all over the place. Um, yeah, so basically getting yourself either a Commodore 64 with a special power supply, a compatible 9-pin joystick. Um, well, these systems should only cost like, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollars uh, or euros, not more. Um, 
it's best to get a system with a couple of cartridges with it because if you uh, have to buy them separately, you know, that could cause you some problems because finding the right cartridge can be a sort of a hassle. Um, the Atari, uh, the basic design of the Atari systems, and let me just flip around. The basic design of the Atari systems, and this is the Atari XL800, which is my favorite actually, stems from the 19, from 1979, uh, the Atari 400, uh, which basically is the area, era of the uh, Odyssey 2. Um, but yeah, something, something like this, I mean, um, the games for it are very comparable to the Commerce 64, and uh, this system even has comparable uh, graphics uh, on the keys. Um, the Atari and both the Commodore 64 had their own uh, series of cartridges released uh, separately. Um, a lot of the classics, uh, similar classics on both systems actually uh, came out. Uh, some of them actually pixel perfect copies of each other. Uh, the systems are really comparable, the Commodore 64 and the Atari. Um, so basically it's just, you know, um, selecting a system and just, you know, trying to get some games for it. Most games, most European games came out for the Commodore 64, came out in compact cassettes. And you'd have to use one of these to load software in. Uh, they... <laughs> They are not so not as reliable as you want them to be, and uh, yes, and this is my the cartridge going wrong. Me, of course, destroying <laughs> cables and stuff in the process. Oh well, my video recording. A lot of the older software came out on. Um, for on uh, in uh, in America, for the older systems, came out on these floppy disks. And uh, investing into something like this, you know, getting a proper floppy drive and stuff, uh, it's it can be quite expensive. Uh, if you if you look, if you know where to look, it can be pretty easy. Um, but you know, finding a reliable disk drive can be sort of a hassle. And if you are not technically inclined, I'd say skip the disk drive thing because it's gonna cause you a lot of grief if you are not willing to repair a disk drive you know perhaps do a new drive belt on it uh, or clean it up a bit um, but yeah um, what else um, the best way to go about uh, these old home computer systems is actually get some cheap cartridge software, get some cheap cartridge games and just, you know, try them out and see if you like the system or not. Um, there's actually two great websites. One is Atari Age, which covers the Atari 8-bit console line as well as the computer line. Um, join the forums and just, you know, read up on different projects that are going on there and you'll be able to get, um, well, more more of a feel of the uh, Atari 8-bit computer sorry computer line the Lemon 64 Lemon 64 is a similar uh, website for the Commodore 64 um, now apart from getting your your uh, cartridges what you can also do is get a solid state storage solution for for your system and for the Atari there's various uh, storage solutions that exist out there, but this is just a, this is just one I got recently, and this is the side um, SDE uh, of the side ED, uh, what is it Compact Flash uh, interface, which allows you to use a, sp a specific or certain uh, Compact Flash cards uh, and use uh, run software from that. And you just stick it in the cartridge slot, and um, yeah, often there's a menu, or there's a BIOS, or there's even a DOS system on it that allows you to to run the games from the cards instead of the, the floppy disk or whatever, because the floppies will have degraded or you know have become less reliable, and 
Not always. I mean, I mean, uh, but yeah. I mean, these things. You know, with this little thin, uh, these little thin floppy things. These have been holding data sometimes as long as you know thirty years, and well, <laughs> they tend they tend to go wrong. Um, so a solid state storage solution for the Atari. There's also flash cartridges that you just uh, hook up to your uh, computer with a USB interface. Uh, you have some software to flash um, game files on the card and you have a very nice multi-menu and you select uh, cartridge, uh, cartridge ROM from it and it'll just run. So it's basically creating your own multi-card for an older system. I mean, links to those are to be found on Atari Age as well. And um, I wanted to show you some other solid-state storage solutions for the Commodore. This, for example, is a very cheap uh, solid-state storage solution, which uh, is for the Commodore 64 and it uses an SDE or MMC card and it just uh, runs single executable files for the Commodore 64 so no drive emulation the other one I showed this one I showed for the Atari doesn't also doesn't do drive emulation just runs single single file programs which often is good but there are a lot of there is a lot of software out there uh, that's on either disk or tape and that just doesn't run from these cards so they've come up with a solution to that and that is actually uh, drive emulation the Atari 8-bit line uses the 1050 drive which is a fifth, fifth, uh, five and a quart uh, floppy drive uses these these type of discs 1541 is for the Commodore 64 totally different format you, you, you cannot read Cross uh, read discs from uh, the separate file or separate disk. Yeah, but this is other solid state storage storage solution, and this is actually the 1541 Ultimate. This is the first version of it, and I was hoping to actually be able to put it in this cart, but actually the PCB is too large, so I won't be able to fit it, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, this this actually uh, has a drive emulation uh, features built in. I mean, it does everything the cheaper version does, but this actually hooks up with a serial cable to the Commodore 64, and it'll just use um, this chip to emulate uh, the 1541 disk drive and um, have it run multiple multiple discs uh, or multiple file games. Uh, bigger games, more elaborate games. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a very nice uh, thing to use, I think. And um, so that similar software uh, exists for the Atari. I recently got such a, such an emulator, uh, a disc emulator, and that is this. And this is actually um, an ISO, or uh, what is it, ISO? What is it? A, a serial cable to um, a serial cable to um, well SD card interface. Um, you hook up the serial cable, very similar to the Commodore 64 serial cable, to the serial out port, the serial port of the 8-bit uh, Atari computer. And you'll just run. Um, you'll just run um, your discs off of this, and this actually contains uh, a menu system that allows you to select uh, and change Atari disc images. It'll display it over here, and uh, it basically is a portable disk drive or multi-system that actually hooks up to the Atari uh, serial interface and actually works more 
Um, well, it doesn't use a cartridge port, so I mean, it uses uh, it, it. It just uses itself and the serial uh, serial port, and uh, yeah. But basically, for for all sorts of systems, basically this type of thing exists. So you can use a bit of modern day technology to access the old game files that are that normally would have been stored on uh, aging. Uh, compact cassettes or you know deteriorating floppy disks so by using this this type of uh, newer technology to store uh, the old game files on um, you'll be able to use uh, the systems which are far more durable than um, than the media that the software was originally installed on apart from cartridges um, that uh, you'll be able to use these computers without any problems uh, for 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 perhaps decades to come. Some some systems have their their faults. I mean, um, the 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 BBC microcomputer, for example, down there, it has its problems. Uh, the power supply and there's caps uh, for uh, a lot of these older systems that uh, can cause some problems, but. Strangely enough, the Commodore 64 and also the Atari uh, XL line of systems, basically, they survived the test of time pretty good. Uh, and you'll be able to pick up a system, a Commodore 64 or an Atari uh, XL, in working condition uh, without it having been refurbished or something. I mean, um, uh, the keyboards often just, you know, will work. Um, everything will just work. Um, the thing is that with the Commodore 64, there's a newer version out there, a, a wide, wider version, uh, the Commodore 64C. It has a slightly different power supply and using uh, the newer solid state storage solutions uh, that require uh, the serial port to be connected and stuff, they use a bit more power and that can give some problems on the older systems, the older brown bread bin systems like Commodore 64. Um, you know, because the, the the power supply just isn't up to, to to feeding all that extra technology with enough power. Um, if that is just a bit too much, and uh, you just want to check out some games, well, then there's something else that you might consider before moving into. Uh, before moving into hardware, uh, gaming hardware, old computer hardware, and that is using emulation. Um, there's a there's an emulator called Altera, which is a great um, Atari 8-bit emulator out there, um, and it allows you to just you know basically use your computer as a an Atari 800 or 1200 or uh, you know whatever. Um, also the console versions um, configure a USB gamepad uh, to use with it um, it'll basically uh, transform your system into uh, a system that emulates runs the old game uh, game cartridges uh, or uh, game files that you would otherwise put on one of these solid state storage solutions and run on the real hardware where you can use instead of the real hardware you can use the same the same files in an emulator um, emulators can be a bit tough to set up uh, because they sort of they uh, some some are less difficult than others but um, yeah sometimes it's easy to go for an easy to set up package and um, now I'm going to show you two to uh, this uh, recently, recently got, I always get the newer versions for it, and that is Commodore 64 Forever and Amiga Forever. And what this contains is actually um, the games and the software to conveniently run on your PC. This will turn uh, a program into a Commodore 64. Uh, it has a very nice menu system, and you'll be able to, to you know, be often playing a lot of games without having to configure them. Just select them from the menu, and you'll just be off, you know, and at it. Uh, a great way to experience um, software. Um, 
There's also a lot of demos from the demo scene on it. So, and it's Windows 7 compatible. Minimum system requirements: uh, 750 megahertz uh, PC, one gigahertz recommended, 512 megabytes of RAM, uh, one gigabyte remember, uh, recommended, and uh, DirectX 9 or higher. Uh, Windows XP, what I said, uh, SP Service Pack number 2, Windows Server 2003, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows Server 2008. So, that is Commodore 64 forever. If you want to foray into, into Amiga emulation, well, this may be something for you as well, because this is Amiga forever. Uh, and this is the premium edition. It, it contains uh, video DVDs and stuff. And the hardware requirements are actually pretty similar to um, to um, to the other one. Actually, exactly the same. Um, the DVD, the first DVD on the on the Amiga Forever, uh, contains the Amiga Forever Plus edition, the game pack. Uh, DVD one contains videos, the launch of the Amiga, Inside Commodore, a documentary. J minor speech, J minor interview, history of the Amiga, and the second and the third DVD actually uh, contains uh, some extra interviews: the deathbed, deathbed vigil, 1994, David Heine interview, 2008, and Amiga faces picture gallery. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, and, and a lot of these software, this software is actually downloadable for free and. Uh, uh, I mean, this has been packaged in a very nice package, but most of the emulator software out there is is is, uh, is open source, and uh, it's a nice way to get the hang of a system. So if you if you are uh, a bit ha hesitant um, to move the step towards uh, actually going out and buying these old systems and using them. You can actually try them out in emulation form first, um, but let me tell you, there's nothing. Uh, not it's it's there's nothing uh, else but playing these games on the original systems on the CRT, uh, and I guess for people my age, 40, 40 plus actually. Um, I, I think it's just, you know, childhood, remembering your childhood, you know, the feel of the controller in your hands, the, 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 the joystick, uh, the way that the old TVs looked, and the way the system sounds. Uh, I mean, emulation on a PC is very polished, and all the pixels are blocky, and they're square, or you can use a filter over it, but it's different and even even using a, a newer system uh, an older system on a newer TV uh, with uh, RGB output uh, it, it's not as fuzzy and almost organic looking than on, a, on an original CRT cathode ray tube you know the big big bulky TVs from back then um, I'm rambling I, I'm, I'm totally rambling here um, yeah you know, I, I, I shot some video with my camcorder, uh, try filming something. Uh, I think I'll just add that on to this video and, you know, just upload it. So this is my non-structured, very ad hoc response uh, to how to get into, or what I see as a way to get into these old computer systems uh, and gaming systems. Um, yeah, how to how to approach it? I think the Commodore 64 and the and the Atari 8-bit compu home computer line are the most accessible because there's games out there in, in cartridge form. There's solid-state storage solutions available on various websites. So I'll put links down below. Um, so it's 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 fairly easy to to, to you know get it up and running. Um, those two systems I'd, I'd recommend. Uh, the BBC, well, it's possible, but uh, I guess you'd have to uh, be in the UK 
or Europe, you know, to be able to experience that because, you know, shipping all that stuff to uh, yeah, America can be pretty expensive and there's a different voltage system. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even that, um, for, I mean, if you're really into vintage computers, uh, I mean, importing something uh, like a BBC and having it really decked out like I have, I mean, I have, uh, I have a coprocessor here. <laughs> This is an Amiga. Uh, Amiga. This is the main uh, system. We've got a twin floppy drive. Uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a solid state storage solution in there. I've actually got another BBC Micro uh, with a solid state storage solution uh, in there from Reto Clinic. Um, I mean, you, I mean, I've, I have an Amiga. 1200 with a solid state uh, state st storage solution. Uh, I've got a lot of consoles with solid state storage solutions um, and I, of course I still continue to buy the original cards and discs and floppies and, and tapes and what have you but um, using the solid state storage solutions really uh, prevents the wear and tear on the original uh, games, the original cards, the original floppies, the original drives and it still beats emulation because you are playing it on the real systems and um, like I said, nothing really beats the real si original systems. There's a ton of specialized chips in these systems that are cycle that need to be uh, need to be emulated cycle exact. That um, you know that every component in the system needs to be uh, emulated exactly as it was as it responded back then. Otherwise, you'll get compatibility errors or you know. Uh, strange things happening and uh, yeah one cannot have that uh, so yeah I'm gonna upload some of the uh, some of the hand cam uh, footage as well and I hope uh, this sheds some light into uh, into getting into these systems I mean oh yeah and, and just you know setting yourself a budget uh, setting yourself up with some information sources, uh, preferably a forum uh, like Atari Age or or um, or um, Lemon sixty four. Uh, getting to know the systems, getting to know the other users, uh, getting to, uh, reading some facts about you know how to use these systems, what these systems are all about really helps. There's an, a fact about Atari 8-bit computers. Um, there's a fact about uh, Commodore 64 computers. I'll put links down below and um, yeah, it, it, it may help you out uh, seeking, uh, seeking some of the information uh, you need. And yeah, basically it's just jump, jumping in the deep end, just, you know, just get a system uh, that was what people did back in the day. I mean, they just got a system and, you know, they hooked it up and started using them. Uh, some manuals. I mean, manuals are also pretty good. I and mean, if, if they're not with the system, get them in PDF format. But uh, this is das uh, Handbuch. It's a manual that I got for, from, uh, from the, uh, with the 130XC. And actually, it is in German, but it actually contains... Uh, a little course on how to program in BASIC and also some hardware information and information on how to expand the system. So getting one of these together with the system and my 130XE only cost uh, 37 uh, euros. Getting a complete system with a power supply with some software is key. Getting a controller with it and just you know starting to use it. Uh, but finding out what system you really like, you're really into first, maybe a good thing, you know, are you a Commodore kid or are you uh, an Atari kid? Uh, are you both? Um, it helps to focus and if you're like me, uh, totally without focus, I mean, look at the video, I'm just all hyper associating all over the place. Um, or if you've been, or if you're like me and you've been around a long time and uh, you want to experience more of the hardware, more of the various systems, uh, yeah, then, then then one system isn't enough. You just want to have more, and you know, come up and play and 
Uh, yeah, I've been having a ton of fun with uh, my Atari, my Atari uh, 800XL and now the 130XE. Um, just playing the games, uh, watching demos, and uh, yeah, using Sparta DOS. There's actually a, um, MS-DOS compatible, MS-DOS command line compatible uh, DOS system that runs off the compact uh, flashcard on the Atari. Things like that. Amazing. People are still doing a lot of amazing stuff uh, with these old 8-bit systems and it just blows my mind and I find it very interesting and I can I cannot look away from it. I just have to see it and I have to experience it myself and if you're like that well you just have to get yourself a system power it on and see where it brings you and see where it takes you. Okay Mark signing off. Oh first a video and then I'll sign off and you know okay So basically get that set up. Uh, you can have all sorts of old old 9-pin Atari joysticks, Atari compatible joysticks. This is the connector. Um, yeah, two two and uh, two button, single button joysticks will actually work on all these systems. This is the Atari joystick, but you can also get stuff like this which is the Competition Pro Joystick, uh, which is more familiar in Europe. Uh, but yeah, any Atari joystick with a 9-pin connector will work. Uh, Genesis Mega Drive uh, controllers will also work, but uh, on the Commodore 64 they may cause some, some keyboard problems because the wires in the Commodore 64 uh, joystick board are actually, uh, uh, at least joystick board 1, are wired into the keyboard as well. Not sure about the 8-bit uh, Atari uh, systems, um, uh, if, if, if there's any known problems with uh, Sega controllers, uh, but yeah, I mean, you should be fine. Getting one of these and then a solid-state uh, card, which allows you to play games or uh, disc images from a card, something similar uh, exists for the Commodore 64. Uh, the 1541 Ultimate, and this is the side card. Homebrew uh, cards, uh, a very third party. Atari Age, for example, has links to this to this one. The 1541 Ultimate is a Dutch. Uh, so I've I've made some videos on these uh, a while back. So uh, you should actually go check those out, I guess, to to find out some more. Yeah, but but basically getting one of this, one of these. And uh, yeah, some, so some real classic cartridges for these systems basically will, will, will help you out. I've, I've multi-game cards also. I mean, I've, I've got a VIC-20 in the game room that has a... Uh, oh, let me go to the game room. Uh, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> I'm kind of reorganizing it. But yeah, this is my VIC-20. And my VIC-20 has a multi-card in it that allows it to to play. Where is it? There, there it is. There's the multi-card that allows it to play um, many games. ColecoVision with a flash card. Uh, this is the Competition Pro joystick I was telling you about. This is actually an old school model. And I've ha I have a new version as well. We're getting one of these Suze Arcade, <coughs> Suze Arcade sticks or one of these old school joysticks. Um, anyways, um, whoops, <laughs> really is immense. Um, basically, getting one of these systems and not go the expensive way of either getting a 1541 disk drive or a 1050 for the Atari. Or uh, another d drive because these old media will have uh, faded away. Uh, it's better to go this route just to check out, you know, if you like the games. And uh, these will probably uh, set you back about as much as a system would cost you uh, 30 thirty dollars, perhaps forty dollars. Of course, not including compact flash. 
uh, but it's fairly easy to uh, to get software up and running on, on a system like this because you can have uh, Atari binary, binary executables on there. You just you know format this in FAT32 and you just uh, uh, throw a couple of uh, these files on there and just you know insert it in the uh, Atari and let me do just that and the Atari uh, the Atari XE actually has the cartridge slot over there in the back so let me switch it on and if you switch it on you'll be presented with uh, just a basic loader program and uh, these are all folders that I've created and in it are just you know your regular files these are Atari executable files single files that will just run uh, get one of these uh, with some of the classic cards I got uh, a, a couple of videos back I got uh, Donkey Kong I got Pac-Man uh, Miss Pac-Man I got you know just for a couple of uh, euros or a couple of dollars you can actually you know uh, have a, an experience similar to uh, the old console systems basically these old 8-bit systems they they are somewhat in between uh, the Nintendo 8-bit systems and you know the old Atari 2600 games because you know they are somewhat in that era um, most of these systems are from the early 80s and the Nintendo Entertainment System is a bit later on uh, it certainly was in Europe um, but yeah so let me just select one of what well, a demo for example I've uh, party demo not sure if this so this is just one uh, a demo it doesn't do much I guess uh, it is the crunching mind you I think that the, the demos for the Commodore 64 are a bit more how do you say that uh, elaborate but I haven't checked out the, the disk based demos yet uh, they're pretty much on par the, the, the Atari 8-bit is a bit I'm gonna reset the system because this is not going anywhere um, the Atari 8-bit systems are actually um, um, how do you say that uh, very good for for old-school arcade games for example uh, let me see the Fender for example that is a very cool game and I've got that uh, on the um, on the cart as well so basically you know getting one of these uh, contact flash cards you know allows you to, to to basically go play the old old school games and uh, yeah it's it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing uh, going to this but finding the, the, the right games can be a problem uh, they're old and, and the, the hardware is old so I mean you might be inclined uh, you must be inclined to do some tinkering with the hardware otherwise you just won't otherwise you'll just you know I mean if there's something going wrong well, I'm just gonna turn it off um, you you may need to repair it or get another system or get a spare um, yeah I opted to, to go the Atari way and use the Atari joystick, this actually is the, the type of joystick that came with the 7800, the, the PAL version of the 7800. And it's a screw on uh, joy pad thingy, and uh, it looks very nice. Doesn't play really nice though. I mean, uh, yeah, you, you, you sort of accidentally hit diagonals and stuff. So, I mean, it's not the best gamepad, but it's a lot nicer than the, uh, I guess, than the. Uh, the, the NTSC version that was out there um, in America and yeah it, it's a genuine Atari thing and very similar to uh, the NES which also had the, the wire coming out the very wrong <laughs> very weird and this is also well it's it's less hazardous but uh, 
yeah, I mean, this, this thing can go all over the place. So yeah, basically that is just me trying to explain something in a very, uh, I don't know, a very creepy way.